Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Knife World Denizen, YouTuber, and the man behind Knives Live, the fundraiser, Shane Gables. I first met Shane in the comments on Thursday Night Knives, where he always offered insights or intel on whatever knife community issues we were discussing. And he always uh, delivered it with honesty and wit, which always got my attention. Then I had the good fortune of meeting Shane in person at Blade Show this year, and we had what was, to me, a memorable conversation about all things knives and knife world. Also got very personal, which I appreciated. On Friday and Saturday, November 4th and 5th, Shane will be producing his second Knives Live 24-hour live feed to benefit knife rights, which raised a bundle for Doug Ritter's outfit last year. Some of those dollars, no doubt, helped make autos legal in my state of Virginia in 2022. So thank you, Shane, and all that were involved last year. We'll talk about Knives Live and a whole lot more. But first, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and download the show to your favorite podcast app so you can listen on the go. And as always, join us on Patreon if you want to get uh, involved in knife giveaways, stickers, exclusive content like uh, extra conversation with Sean that I'll be having. Uh, just go over to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon and check it out. Again. That's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at the knifejunkie.com slash knives. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Shane, it's good to have you on this side of the camera on the Knife Junkie podcast. Welcome to the show, sir. It's good to be here. Uh, so I want to congratulate you on the announcement of your second Knives Live 24-hour uh, live feed. Tell me about last year's show and how you came up with this idea. A little bit of a long story, Bob, but uh, uh, we're here. <laughs> I, I'm glad you asked because uh, I noticed on the, uh, the the very professional looking promo for this video, you know, that said that I was the the founder of Knives Live. So I'm glad to get to tell this this story because it wasn't just me. Um, what happened was uh, I became a fan of Grateful Panic Knife Reviews, and um, if any of you guys that have ever been to Grateful Panic's live streams, they, they kind of became infamous for, uh, you know, they may roll on for two, three, four, five hours into the late night hours. And uh, at the time, he was the only one doing that. And we rarely ever talked about knives. But uh, we were on there one night, you know, just having conversation and, and making friends. And I don't remember how KC did it, but KC from Knives Fast had commented to John about um, he should just go ahead and do a 24 hour live stream and nothing else was said about it. And as soon as the live stream was over, it was probably two, three o'clock in the morning. I called uh, grateful panic on, on Instagram. Yeah. I called him through Instagram and I was like, Hey, let's do that. And, uh, and I'll be completely open and honest. When we first came up with this idea, the reason for it was to, our main motivation was to cross promote channels. You know, we wanted to have this 24 hour live stream with 24 slots. Each channel does an hour and maybe invite some guests on. And it was, um, like I said, our, our primary motivation was to expose people to channels that they may have not seen before. And uh, we just, man, we just brainstormed for two or three hours. I mean, until the sun came up and, uh, you would know, we realize we're going to do this, you know, uh, let's do it for a cause. And, and knife rights was the first thing that came to mind just because it seemed appropriate. Uh, you know, these are all knife channels, Doug and, and knife rights, which if you guys don't know, knife rights is Doug, his wife and an attorney. That's it. You know, and, and they don't, you know, it's not a big organization that they have helping them do all this. So anyway, we picked knife rights and, uh, you know, we started brainstorming about how, you know, we would take 
taking super chats and all those would go to knife rights. And then we realized that super chats, you only get 70% of, <laughs> and we didn't want YouTube taking that money. And, uh, I don't remember whose idea it was. I don't want to rob them of that credit, but there was like, you know, somebody mentioned that maybe we should do it a little differently. And, uh, shortly after John Evans, who most of you guys know is Javon, we, we didn't name him Javon because his, his screen name is Jay Evans knife addict. I, I can't remember the whole thing, but much easier just to call him Javon. He got involved because John was, um, he works for one of the cable companies pretty much. He, his job is online marketing and stuff like that. And, uh, because once I started sending out messages asking people if they wanted to do this and everybody was jumping on board, instantly questions started coming up that I couldn't answer. And, you know, and I, I very quickly learned that I had gotten in way over my head <laughs> and I didn't know what I was doing. So, you know, thank God for, for John Evans, uh, picking up that slack and, you know, we, uh, he's the one that kind of came up with the, the method and the method was, we would start promoting it. We cross promoted on Facebook and um, we were trying to get people to donate directly to kniferights.org. So what we did was we said that for every $10 you donated, you got one entry into the grand prize giveaway. But if you bought a yearly membership, which is $35, that got you four. Uh, upon completing your donation to kniferights.org, they email you a receipt. So you would take that receipt and forward it to John Evans. He entered that into a spreadsheet that contained all, you know, all the entries. Mm. Um, what was so great about it was uh, uh, maybe other than, than knife rights, other huge giveaway they do to my knowledge, it was the, the biggest knife giveaway in a 24 hour period I've ever seen because each time slot and everybody that participated, even the guests, you know, people who did guest spots, they all gave a knife away during their time slot. So you had knife giveaways going on all night. And uh, leading up to it, we had all of the knives donated for the grand prize. Some of those were just viewers. Uh, some were from manufacturers, distributors. All that was being forwarded to Lefty EDC. And I remember at one point in time, Lefty sent me a picture of his living room, which was virtually unusable because of the amount of gear that was piling up in boxes, I actually started feeling guilty. I started asking people to stop. <laughs> it was just too much stuff, you know, and uh, so we ended up doing, I think, five grand prize packages. All of them were uh, excellent. I, I don't know another word to use. You know, it was, uh, if a guy was brand new to EDC, he could win one of those packages and not need a thing. Nice. So it was awesome. So you had, you know, 20 to 30 winners the night of that were, you know, winning from on the hourly slots. And then you had I can't remember, four or five grand prize uh, winners uh, a week later. But the best thing about it, though, Bob, was the uh, uh, the way it brought all of us together. You know, all these content creators came together and, you know, we all talk on a daily basis now. You know, we've, we've made some really good friendships out of it. And because we're all combined now it, it makes it much easier for us to do uh grand things when needed such as you know you know our friend jason brown just passed away and uh there have been multiple uh multiple fundraisers for that you know from there's been you know just auctions on people's you know their their weekly lives that, that have raised two and three thousand dollars at a pop um you know, and we've had, a, you know, we've still got the EDC roundtable is uh, right now is, is about to release their information on their huge raffle. It's the same way. It's multiple, multiple packages going to be given away. So if you, if you donate to that and get a few slots in, I don't want to say the number because I don't want to get it wrong, yeah. but it's a lot, a lot of opportunities to win. What, and it's what, all thanks to the fact that we all are, have kind of come together and, and made that kind of thing possible. What do you think accounts for, uh, I mean, the closeness? I'm, I, I understand uh, in, in terms of the sequence of events, 
uh, that led to a closeness in the knife uh, in this sector of the knife community uh, that you're talking about. But, um, you know, besides those sequent, uh, you don't see that kind of closeness in other enthusiast groups, at least uh, you don't in the martial arts community that that I'm also a part of. Like, I, I see a lot of people bickering about techniques and and that right. kind of thing. Um, w w what do you think accounts for the closeness? It's really odd that you asked that because I had a phone call. I'm not going to mention who it was. I, I talked to yesterday because I don't have permission to. But uh, I told him that I, I thought it would be really cool to see somebody do a study on this and figure out how something as robotic as a YouTube algorithm brought brought these people together. And when I say these people, I don't just mean the content creators. I mean these same guys that you see in the comment section of every single live stream. You know, we're all we're all in discords and, and Instagram chat groups together. We talk every day, you know, and uh, to me, the, the common denominator is not knives. It's all. Uh, um, past struggles, you know, whether it be addictions or depression or whatever, you know, something brought us down. We found this community and realized that we're all just as screwed up as the next guy and that that kind of brought us together for the most part now you have some that are that are in for the knives don't get me wrong but uh I, I, that's what i think you know the, the fact that we all we all needed something or somebody and we found that here that is interesting i mean uh the the idea of you doing a uh, this may have been tongue-in-cheek but doing a study of that and figuring out what it is about i mean because initially of course it is the knives uh, that that brings someone knocking on the door, um, so to speak, but and and interest in that. Uh, but once you're in the door and you see the people there and and why they are interested in that thing and you see the commonalities. Um, yeah, but it, it, uh, again, like I said, it, it, yes, it, it might not be about the knives in particular, but still, I, I feel like you don't see that as much in other enthusiast groups. And I've been trying to get down to the bottom of that, too. Um, you know, what's I've that about? In, I've been in the pew pew groups, uh, you know, and fishing groups and stuff like that. And if you dared <laughs> to bring up a personal issue or conversation in those groups, man, that was that was uh career suicide you know what i mean <laughs> yeah and it's just different here I, I don't know how to explain it you know but um i wish i could break, mention these channels but i don't, I don't want to mention anybody's names without permission but i was in, in another late night live recently you know where a fairly new guy came in and i had seen him in a couple of chats um but he was he was pretty new to the community and he came into this live right in the middle of a conversation about about addiction um and he was, I, I was a little worried at first because, you know, his first reaction was, you know, are you guys talking about drugs and addiction? And we were like, yeah, you know, we're, we're kind of open to talk about anything here. But within 30 minutes, you know, that guy, nearly everybody in the group's in tears. You know, mm -hmm. he's, he's spilling his guts, you know, and talk about what he's going through and how badly he's been looking for a group of like-minded people to, you know, just to talk about his problems. And, you know, now he's a, He's an everydayer, you know, he's right there, one of the guys, and it's uh it's amazing to see. It really is. It's like group uh group therapy, but without it being uh guided by anyone in particular, like a therapist. It's like people coming together. You know, it reminds me of uh, like schools of art when you look in history, you know, um, and you know, like-minded artists kind of come together and they're all kind of confused about what's going on and they all have their baggage, but together they sort of, um, uh, form a loose affiliation and, 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 and out of that comes like a, a school of, like a type of painting or a type of sculpture or something like that. It oh, kind of oh. seems like, kind of seems like the same thing here and now, and it has to do with here and now it's not just, Oh, it's the it's knives that brings people together and does this. It happens to be here and now, and who knows, uh, it could flash away or whatever. You know, however things grow and evolve, and then maybe there's a period of time in the knife enthusiast group where there's not that, because the right combination of people is isn't there. Kind of like a band. Oh yeah, and 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 don't be wrong, guys. If you're new to all this or you're thinking about joining these, this is not something you have to be a part of. It's not, you know, it's not prevalent. It's kind of a uh, 
behind, I won't say behind closed doors, but you have to know where to find these places, you know, that we're meeting and talking about these kind of things, you know, so, you know, I don't want anybody that just wants to be a casual knife fan to think that, uh, you know, that they have to talk about that. No, it, it's not eyes wide shut, <laughs> right. but, right. uh, no, but, but what it has also resulted in is a lot of really good content and also a lot of, you know, when enthusiasts get together, uh, and standards are sort of developed or standards sort of percolate out of everyone's uh, dialogue, it starts to make the knife makers, the people who are making the knives and manufacturing the knives, kind of holds their feet to the fire because now you have a, a big group of people and they know what they want. And, and now you can start getting away with less and less as a manufacturer. Uh, how have you seen that kind of happen? Best example is very, is very recent, actually, was, um, you know, I had never looked into buying a Hogue, Hogue knife. Uh, this was probably a year and a half ago. And I'll never forget, I think it was one of the very first comments ever made on your show. Um, I was new to it, and I'd commented that I that I had bought a Benchmade Grip Tillion. I had it an hour and had to send it back because that's just like the spring didn't break. It actually popped out of the hole in the frame and got wedged between the scale and the and the the liner. And anyway, I sent it back, and I will never forget because when I brought it up, you said you should have bought a hook. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. Um, and at that point, I wasn't into steels yet, and I wasn't into uh, quality heat treats. I didn't really know that much about that kind of stuff and didn't care. So I did purchase a couple of Hogue products and I, and I love them. And I still do. Um, and it wasn't until I got into researching quality heat trace that I realized Hogue ran their 20 CV a little bit soft. Um, I think they could get away with it more than others because of their, their great blade geometry. So even, mm -hmm. even when the edge dull, they still cut. Um, but when they released Magna cut, um, I think their first their first batch of Magna Cut knives was at fifty nine to sixty, and the community lost their minds. <laughs> you know, they were just highly upset, talking about how bad they wanted these knives. But they were not buying it at that. And in their defense, a lot of people don't remember this, but fifty nine to sixty one HRC was Larian's original target. That's what he originally told people to heat treat. Mm -hmm. So they just they went by you know, the doctor's advice, but it was quickly realized that Magna Cut was so much better, way better at 63, 64, it was 65, because it's very unusual for a steel to gain toughness at a higher HRC, mm -hmm. but Magna Cut does. Um, and so Hogue immediately changed that. And um, kind of the same thing happened with Greg Medford. You know, he he had on his website that his, uh, his Magna Cut was gonna be at 59 to 61, and uh, there was an immediate public outrage, and uh, and he fixed it. You know, so it's proof. You know, that if, if everybody comes together, you know, and we agree on something, something's not right. We we can make it right. Yeah, and that that outrage is actually a gift to the manufacturer because that can Absolutely. that can save them a hell of a lot of money in the long run. Because you can see people, uh, you know, you can you can just. You know, if you've been following knives long enough, you can see trends and you can see how people go uh, nuts about something for a while and it's hot and heavy and then and then it vaporizes. Right. Um, that can happen with, you know, it's less likely to happen to a Hogue, which is USA made and super quality in a family business and all that stuff. Um, everyone wants them to do well and they do do well. But, uh, you know, a knife company can disappear pretty easily if people lose faith. Right. And another thing, I, I think some people get upset about the outrage and some people handle it differently than others. Um, I won't mention channels, but there are some people out there that, you know, they get really upset at some channels about how they present their passion and how they present issues. And, uh, but keep in mind, the only other option is to keep your mouth shut and not purchase it. That, that does nothing for the, for the maker. If you're just being quiet, not buying it, because you're not happy, then they don't know, they don't know why people aren't buying their knives. And just like you said, they can go away. You know, we've seen it proof of that in the past two years that, you know, 30 days of, 
of of bad can literally just make a company disappear forever. Yeah, so. Who are you, who are you talking about? Which channels or which companies? Uh, which company? I'm just talking about here locally, you know, with the, you know, with, with the pandemic stuff. It, oh, 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 it, I get it, what you're saying. Take, it, yeah, it doesn't take a, a lot of time of them losing money before they just disappear and don't come back. Okay, I see what you're saying, because I, I have been, um, I've been racking my brain for companies that uh, were that did come on hot and heavy. Real Steel came on real, or um, no, Steel Will came on real hot and heavy and, and other, and, and other companies did. And now, you know, you, you don't really see hide nor hair of them. And I, I don't know, Still I don't know why that hair. is, but it could be, what's that? Still will. <sighs> Still will. I had some of the worst tested edge retention of any knife company I've ever seen. Yeah. And maybe that wasn't their fault. You know, they could have been contracting that out, but I think that hurt them a lot. They had some great looking designs. Um, you know, I was all about them there for a little while until, uh, I made the mistake of diving down the rabbit hole, um, uh, with Outpost 76. He's got, uh, excellent, excellent oh. retention chart, HRC yeah. charts. And then I got into that and, and overnight it changed my mind about everything. And, uh, you know, you start seeing these companies that, that are very hot and very popular and you realize that they're. Their heat treats aren't very good, you know, and uh, some of them are premium companies you're paying a lot of money for. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what? Hey, so, what's and, your? And Bobby, you don't use your knife all day, every day, and dull it. Don't, don't, don't go down that rabbit hole. Buy what, oh, you, uh, buy what you like, enjoy it, because it ruins a lot of knives for me, to be honest. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't even know what. I mean, you know, because I don't push anything I have to anywhere near its limit. Who who knows? My hinderers could all be like H eight CR thirteen MOV for all I know. Um, oh God, I'm embarrassed to admit that. Uh, but I so don't what? Think the right sale. I don't I don't think they are either. But so what's your <clears throat> what is your wheelhouse then? You said uh, that that just seeing his um, HRC chart kind of changed your view on on a whole bunch of companies overnight kind of where were you and where are you now? And I know, and I'd like you to bring up the, your purge of, of uh, foreign made knives as well. Yeah. That, that's what caused that. Um, okay. Just like everybody else I got into, when I got into knives, you know, every week, not every week, every night, you know, when I got into a, you know, whatever YouTuber was on had a live show that night, I was watching it. People were talking about what they just got, you know, how would, shrink that screen and go to blade HQ and look at what they're talking about. Like, Hey, I, I can afford that. And, uh, so I started out buying a ton of budget knives and I, I started getting that feeling that it wasn't, that it wasn't necessarily the knives. I think I was addicted to that endorphin rush when I pull up and see that box on the porch. And that scared me a little, you know, because I didn't really know if the knives even meant that much to me. But, uh, when I got into, you know, the quality heat treats and seeing what a steel could do. Um, naturally that led me to Spyderco. Um, because and, unless you're, unless you're having a knife custom made, um, by the right custom maker, cause they don't all do it great either. There are some out there that do, but unless you're having a knife custom made, in my opinion, you're not going to get a, a better heat treat consistently than you can from Spyderco. I wasn't a fan of Spyderco's uh, looks, to be honest with you. Yeah. But when I started seeing that that a Spyderco in 20 CV was cutting five to six hundred feet before it would no longer cut paper, and almost everybody else's was cutting three hundred. Hmm. Um, about I've never cut five hundred feet of cardboard. <laughs> That's the funny part of it, is I don't need it, but but it's just knowing that, that that somebody cared enough, you know, to put that kind of quality into it is what turned me into a uh, a Spyrco fanboy as bad as I didn't want to be one. And they're not the only ones out there. Like I said, you know, Ho's doing a good job. They're making a cut now. Benchmade has, you know, has some stills. They do an excellent job in all but their 3D. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So when I started chasing after these better knives, um, I, 
I kind of talked about this last night, but I live in a town where in the past, in the past 10, 15 years, uh, almost all of the best paying jobs have disappeared. They've mm. all gone overseas. You know, so I've seen uh, everybody's families affected by it. I've seen the struggle that it's caused. Now we, we haven't seen the worst of times yet. You know, uh, our little town's doing okay, but, but anyway, that, that kind of lit a fire under me about, uh, about trying to buy American when I can. Uh, we, we can't avoid buying foreign made products anymore. We just can't, but super still Steve put out a video about it that really hit home with me. And, and what he was saying, and very few people absorbed this because Steve's personality was so abrasive that they heard bits and pieces and just left assuming that he was just hateful. But what he was saying was that, after you, if all you can afford is a Civivi knife and you need it for, you know, your job or whatever, for whatever reason, you, if, if I, that's all you can afford, then buy one because they make some good knives. But what he was talking about was us people who are purchasing way more knives than we need, which means that that is expendable income. He's like, you know, try to stop seeding your expendable income to China. So I attempted to do that. And I'll be completely honest, guys, I went from a, a box a week on my front porch to a box every couple of months. So, you know, it wasn't easy, <laughs> but I'm way, way happier with, with the product that I have now. You know, I went from about 130, 140 knife collection down to less than 40 at this point, but uh, I wouldn't trade back for anything in the world now. I gave all those knives away. I, the reason I did that was because I wasn't familiar with even how to sell a product online. Um, I just wasn't willing to learn. So I just started giving them away. You know, I didn't post, Hey, I got this knife. Who wants it? I had so many knives that I would see somebody in the chat talking about a, you know, a Civivi uh, dogma and somebody else mentioned how much they'd like to have that knife, they just can't afford it. So I hit him on IG, hey, shoot me your address. And I'd send them my dogma. Oh, that's cool. Within about a year, you know, I, I'd given away about 100 knives. Looking back on that, <laughs> you know, at an average value of 50 bucks, that was $5,000, you know. Um, and shipping. <laughs> yeah, plus 10 bucks a pop shipping. Yeah. But that's that's priceless. Uh, that's priceless karma or good karma or whatever that's called. That's priceless. That's. That's uh, you did you did something good there, and the universe uh, is gonna remember that. You know, I like I think a lot about <clears throat> you hear people say, you know, you, your possessions begin to own you, and uh, I don't know exactly how that saying goes, but it's like something like that. If you're not careful, the things that you possess will possess you, and I kind of am just always constantly on the brink of that because there's, um. Because I like, for instance, right now I'm into Bowie's and there are so many Bowie knives I don't have. And yes, it's kind of ridiculous. I don't I'm not out there uh, on the range or, or getting in knife duels. Um, <laughs> but uh, so you, you start accumulating things like that and suddenly you look at and you're like, well, God, you know, I have too much. And for me right now, it's not the Bowie knives, but I do have a bunch of, say, Civivi knives. Uh, you know, I have seven Civivi knives and I, I, you know, I, I call them emotional support knives. I carry them around to flip them, you know, right. they're fidget stones, they're comfort stones, but I, 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 still, I still own Chinese knives. I, I still have very few, but the other ones that I have kept have meaning, you know, like, uh, gift. I sent my Civivi riffle to Andrew at Hawaii Knife and Gear. Mm -hmm. Mine was the first folding pocket knife he ever made custom Koa scales for. And it is, you, you can't, it sucks because you can't put a picture of it on Instagram. Yeah. You it's, got, it's, it's got, it's got natoyance or chatoyance. What do they call that? That sheeny thing. Shatoyance. There's depth. It's just absolutely beautiful. And, uh, you know, so I'll never get rid of that knife, you know, and I tell people all the time, it's a fine knife. It, it really is. You know, I am pro American made, but I won't deny that I could get rid of every, every knife I own and keep that riffle and, and I'd be fine. You know, mm. it, it's a good knife. Um, you know, 
I, I've been accused of being a, a Chinese knife hater, and and that's by my own that's my own fault. You know, I, mm-hmm. I've gotten a little too passionate about it at times, but but I'm not. I just uh, I just I just want to see as much promotion of American stuff as as I do Chinese. And very few YouTubers are able to keep that balance. Um, yeah. You can keep you keep that balance well. I feel like Jared Neve keeps that balance well. Um, you know, I try to be as honest as I can when I talk about anything. You know, you hand me a Chinese knife and it's a good knife. I'm gonna, hey man, it's a nice knife. Yeah. You know, and and I too wish that we could buy American made equivalents at, at least close to the same price, but you know. We can't. Yeah, I mean to your to your point <clears throat> and to Steve's point. Uh, you can't avoid. You, you want a fountain pen, or you you want a ballpoint pen? It's going to be made in China. You want uh, it, anything? You want an iPhone? It's going to be made in China. But um, but the things that we do have control, more control over, like our disposable incomes. Yeah, we can we can save and and get something made here. Um, right. Yeah, I, I I see that. I I try to do that. Um, and the way I do that mostly is uh, custom fixed blade knives think custom knives that i can afford um are 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 something that's a new uh kind of avenue for me but you said something before that that struck me you were talking about the 20 cv um spider co that you know is perfectly heat treated and that you for your needs don't necessarily need that but knowing that uh that it's very very well done and is a like perfect example of that oh that's beautiful um, it, it reminds me of, uh, my grandmother, Tignorelli would say, uh, was very frugal, grew up in the depression was always like, I hope you never have to go through this, uh, a depression, um, which I, I too hope that, but she, she always said, get the very best you can afford. If you're going to spend the money on something, get the best you can afford. So it makes sense. If you're going to buy a spider co and you're not a knife a day on the front porch kind of guy. You're a knife every couple of months guy. Yes, spend that extra money and get the best you can afford because you will also, if you need to or want to sell it downstream, you'll get the most for it. Right. I don't know. I don't know if you remember this, me telling you when we talked at Blade Show, but uh, I the knives that I bought at Blade Show were the I don't know how to word this were the first knives I'd bought since the prior Blade Show, except for one. In other words, I bought one knife um, between blade shows, you know, and I saved my money up and I had a good idea of what I, you know, what I was looking for when I got there. And, uh, you know, and I went in and I, I bought those knives. Now, I've acquired a couple of knives since blade show this year, but last year um, it was good for me. You know, it was good building my, my uh, I forget the word, uh, Anyway, it was good for me to make myself stop purchasing knives and and hold out like I did. But it made Blade Show and the purchase the purchases that I did make so much better. You know, I enjoyed them so much more. I'm really fortunate that I'm not a fan of titanium frame locks. Oh, yes, you are. The reason I say that is because I'm fortunate because I can't afford them anyway. <laughs> um <laughs> I love them. I appreciate them. They just don't work good for me. Yeah, I have some issues that I've talked about multiple times, but uh, they don't work great for me. So I'm, I'm fortunate there that I'm not having to chase, you know, four hundred to eight, nine, a thousand dollar titanium yeah. folders. So I'm really happy in this hundred and fifty to two hundred dollar American made knife place that I am right now. You're also in a good place because you have a channel and you have a lot of friends. And right. and I would imagine, like, I just, um, I had the opportunity to check out a um, Grimsmo Norseman, which I never, I've never owned one and I've never held one. And uh, one of my awesome viewers and patrons, uh, you know, had one come to me before it went to him. You know, he bought one new and he gave me a chance to check it out. And man, what an experience. What a beautiful knife. And what a what a perfect work of handmade, you know, uh, machine made, handmade, man made uh, tooling and and tool. And I loved it while I had it, but now I know I don't need one. I yeah. I really like it, and and it would be great for the Demarco Museum of Cutlery, 
but I don't need a museum of cutlery. Um, so, so I, it was nice to experience, but also nice to send along, like being an uncle. Right. V very early in, uh, into my channel, within the first month, I had a Norseman loan to me to review. Mm -hmm. um, I chose not to post a review for it. You know, looking back on it now, as far as you know, your YouTube career, what you should and shouldn't do, I should have, but I didn't because uh, I had a great appreciation for the knife and for the craftsmanship, but, but I wasn't a fan. Mm. Didn't know how to express that without sounding negative or, you know, not that I thought my little tiny channel was going to influence somebody not to buy a knife, but I chose not to do the review, but you're right. I've got to handle some awesome stuff. You know, I don't know if you know who he is. There's a guy I got a channel with his name, Satu Dave. Um, oh yeah. 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 He's a big fan of the, the Satu. Yeah. And uh, Satu has sent me knives to loan with just this recent uh, couple that, that he sent me. Um, if I if something happened to those knives and I lost them, I couldn't pay for them with every knife I own. Yeah. You know, that's scary. But it's also such, it's great that I get to experience those without paying the money for them because I, I won't pay the money for them because I won't carry them. And he knows that he knows they're not my style of knives, but he knows I like to experience them. So, yeah, you know, right now, the only titanium frame lock knife I own is a Chris Ridge Sabenza. And I feel like it's all I need, you know, and it's not the easiest knife to open for me. <laughs> yeah. With the, with the pointy little, uh, yeah, it is not the easiest knife to open. Um, and, and I have, you know, relatively thin fingers and like, it should work. Well, I, I have, I, I have hands like Chris Reeves son, uh, Tim Reeve, you know, <laughs> like yeah, it should work. I, yeah. You actually kind of resemble a little bit. Yeah. He's a great guy. He is. Um, th so who do you think does it best? Uh, I know you said spider coat, you like spider coat, um, in your collection. Is that, is that what you think is the best stuff? Is that your favorite? Uh, are those your favorite knives in your collection? I don't own either either one of these makers knives, um, but I've seen the test results and I've researched the people enough and their product enough to know if I, if I had to pick, it would be hard because it's a tie between my top two. But right now, I don't think anybody does a better heat treat than Big Brown Bear and or uh, it's three, Transparent Knives mm -hmm. and Alex Steingrabber. Any of those three, you can't go wrong. You know, they're all still nerds. You know, they're, they're all pu pushing the very outer limits of what steels can do. I mean, you see that if you follow Brian's Instagram, he's throwing blades away every day. Yeah. You know, because he's pushing them to the point of failure. You know, he's pushing them to the point that they're, they crack wide open when he takes them out of the oven. You know, because he wants to know what that 10 degree difference will do. And guys pushing the limits like that is what leads to uh, you know, because they're all very generous in sharing their heat treat recipes. And, you know, so they'll just put it out there on the internet for the world to see. And that way, well, you know, fine example, uh, the knife I'm the most excited about coming out right now is the new Spyderco Manix 2 and 15V. And Spyderco used Triple B or Big Brown Bear, or however you know him as, they used his heat treat recipe. Oh. So it's kind of a collaboration. It was their design, but it's his heat treat. And I can tell you right now, if if they if they even got close to Triple B's heat treat recipe on 15V, it it may be a thousand foot cutter. You know, that's entirely possible. It, it may take over K390, uh, Rex 45. You know, it's going to be at least in the top five of edge retention knives ever made. So. I'm excited about that. It's $156, Bob. What? $156 for this knife, G10 scale, 15V with Triple B's heat treat recipe. Wow. It's the knife of the year. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> it's the knife of the year. You know, it's not going to win that because it's a 10 year old design. Right, fun. right, right. I'm looking forward to the, uh, the military too. Uh, we've had the paramili paramilitary two forever. The military two. I've been wanting for so long. They have they have it so that you can have it tip up 
and it comes with a compression lock, which is, oh man, to me, I'm, I'm so ready for that because uh, the, param uh, the paramilitary two has always been an awkward design for me. I've always liked the expanded lines of the military, you know, you kind I of understand that the, the PM two or paramilitary two, the thumb ramp, I don't know about you, but it does not land where my thumb needs to be. My thumb ends up right at the crest. Mm -hmm. So it's poking into my thumb. Um, I, so I have to back up on it to a spot that's a lot less comfortable for me. But with the military, it's not that because of it being bigger, it, it corrects that issue. And I own the military. But I'll be honest, I don't mind the tip down. I, I don't get it. I don't get why people dislike it. Um, if you, if you carry a tip down knife for two or three days, you, you're going to forget that it's tipped down. You know, it, I, I think that, I think the real issue lies in the detent. You have, uh, the, the detent has to be a certain strength. Otherwise the danger of it opening up and slicing your hand is there. And, um, I, I think that, well, that's what it is for me because, with the military and with the SOCOM elite. Those are two I've always excused because I've had no choice in the matter uh, because they're such cool knives that I can excuse the tip down nature of them and, and, and have it down where I can pull it out and, you know, have it ready to bear for that knife fight that, that just pops up uh, right. because that's the only reason you'd need to really deploy your knife quickly like that. Um, so really it's no issue, but, but it did excite me to get the, so, uh, to get the SOCOM Bravo tip up. Uh, the Reich made one. Um, and it was cool to get, uh, it is cool to look forward to that military too. Let me ask you actually, while, uh, while we're talking about this, Microtech uh, came out with first the Bra uh, SOCOM Bravo, and now they have the, um, uh, what's the other one that they're, um, it's the knife that they usually, oh, the Annex. Yeah. Uh, also made by by Reich Knife. So those are the first two knives they've ever made offshore, and they chose a, a very talented knife maker, knife making company that's good at sculptural stuff and all that. Um, I was, I got to say, I'm, I, I have one and I really like it, but I was, I was kind of shocked by that move, only because they've always been very um, vocal about how everything is American made. It's sort of like if you're not vocal about it and then you do something like that, no one notices. But if you spend a lot of time, um, you know, I don't want to say bragging, but, you know, boasting that you're all American made and then you start doing that. It looks a little funny. I don't know. What did you think about that? I, I, was, I wasn't happy with the I, I wasn't happy with the fact that they had to do it. Um, and that's different than saying I wasn't happy with the fact that they did it. I wasn't happy with the fact that they had to do it. What I mean by that is there aren't enough skilled working Americans anymore mm. to take these jobs or willing to do these jobs in order for Microtech to be able to up their production, to be able to sell enough uh, Microtech SOCOMs for the demand that was created for them. They're just not. Um, yeah. You know, so it was either... They, they have the Bravo made overseas. They changed, you know, they added Bravo to it so that you could distinctly tell the difference. They came right in, out and said where it was going to be made and why. That lessens the blow some. You know, at least they didn't try to sneak and do it. But um, like I said, I'm, I'm more upset about the fact that they had to mm, yeah. uh, and about the fact that they did. Um, you know, what do you do? Yeah, it's a much, much bigger issue. Right. You know, that's you know. not, we, we've had conversations about we wish Bitch May would do this. We wish Bitch May would do that. While I was at Blade Show, I went up to the Bitch May booth and I talked to them and I asked them what the odds of them ever bringing back the Contigo work. Because I feel like it's the best knife yeah. that it's made. And he said, we have no plans of ever bringing back the Contigo. Um, have you tried the Adonis? And I own an Adonis. I, I get it. It, it's a better, it's a better knife. If I had to sell one, I'd sell my Adonis. <laughs> right. well, I, I still love the Contigo, but the Adonis is a better knife. But my, the reason I, I bring that up, the point is, Bitchmade makes, is it thirty six thousand knives a week or a month? I'm not sure. Zach, Zach stuff was talking about it, and it's not enough. They're in the same boat that Microtech is. They, they can't. There's no point in talking about a new model 
when they don't have enough people to to work that new assembly line. Um, there's no point in complaining about bringing something back or changing anything when they're in a position right now where they can't produce enough of what they make uh, to fill orders. You know, Tim Reeves in the same position right now. You know, his books are backed up months, maybe over a year. You know, why why would they listen to any request that we have when they're like, man, we can't do what we're doing, much less something different. Yeah. So I get it. You know, yeah. I just appreciate that he was honest about it. Yeah. There's all, I mean, that's also a good reminder too. And this is kind of counter of what we've been saying. It sounds a little materialistic, uh, but it's also a good indication. If there's a knife that you're really into, uh, save up for it and get it because they go away. And, you know, uh, I'm a huge cold steel guy since 1987, since I was in high school, man. I love cold steel, always will. And I just, I just got one last week, a Bowie knife. That's what I, you know, it's one of my favorite things that they do, these big fixed blade knives. And <clears throat> I have realized that there are some things that they made um, a while ago, you know, years and years ago at this point that I thought would, I sort of assumed they'd always make. They went away. They were available uh, in, in stock for a while and, and secondary. And now they're like the Desperado. You can't find that knife anywhere ever on the secondary and um that's a knife i would always like to have for my collection and that's a collector's kind of issue but i recently had somebody contact me about um sharpening their their recon xl and um so i looked it up and i was like man i, I don't even know if it's a good idea to sharpen that knife he's like what do you mean i was like and that thing's selling for like seven or eight hundred dollars on ebay right now and i never heard back from him so i'm sure he sold it <laughs> <laughs> but, uh I really didn't want to put an edge on it. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to hurt the resale value, but uh, yeah, it, it's still crazy to me though, Bob, that when I, the, the part that really confuses me and almost upsets me is when I see the prices that are being paid for certain products, foreign and domestic. Um, this weekend on Zach stuff, he was talking about the new crew wear, very thin, uh, hunting knife fixed blade hunting knife that they've got and uh, it's 300 and something dollars whoa for a fixed blade for a production fixed blade knife and man i, I want to promote bench made all i can but then then i also found out that at the very same time right now if they have any left you can go to bradford's website you can buy a bradford guardian 3 and rex 45 for a hundred and ten dollars. What? Bought it last night. <laughs> Nicely done. A hundred and ten dollars for a Rex forty five Bradford I, Guardian. 30. I mean, that's just a killer price for a Bradford Guardian. Period. But I mean, in in that steel, which yeah. quite honestly, I don't know what its characteristics are. I just know it's awesome from what I hear. Uh, but uh, wow, yeah, and that's made right here. And uh, I spent a good deal of time at the Bradford booth. I didn't buy a Bradford, <clears throat> but just talking with them, they're really cool. And uh, and uh, there's a woman there who runs the show that I want to get on this show. Uh, I think they call her Lady Bradford. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's a, a a good way to to go about it if you're if you're wanting to. Um, you know, uh, be extravagant in that way. Do right. it with a company that is right here. Um, you know, on this show, I always love the family business uh, stories. I, I love seeing seeing people. Um, well, I love like seeing families that are tight, but seeing them around some sort of cause is kind of a cool, um, a cool birth story for a, a knife company. I'm glad you brought that up because another great one is. Uh... Mr. Michael Martin with American Blade Works. Yes, yes, yes. That's that's him and his wife. Yep. Oh, and uh, you know, I, I've been in communications with him recently because I had a, I actually had an issue with my knife, and uh, you know, he people talk about customer service at, at companies like Benchmade and things like that, and, and I'm sure it's great, but um, I'm not going to say it's just better, but you can't do any better than what he what he has done. 
you know, I, I sent him the knife. He, you know, he, he agreed that there was an issue. Um, held on to it a little longer than what most people would appreciate, to be honest. Um, I haven't had it since a couple of weeks after Blade Show. However, because I know why, I, I'm not upset. Um, he was having some issues with consistency on 20 CV. Um, he, he, you know, do, he was literally doing batches the exact same way and having different results. Hmm. Uh, it didn't make any sense. He, you know, he began to wonder if it was uh, the steel itself, you know, if there was something different about it when he was getting it. But um, he, the, my point is he wasn't willing to just put a new blade on it and send it back to me without knowing that it fixed the problem. And uh, luckily for him, because I, I had a complaint, I had an issue, and it caused him to have to do some research. He's decided to switch to MagnaCut hmm. and has now found out that he can have his MagnaCut blanks heat treated by Peterson's for like $4 a blade. And he said, you know, he got to doing the math. You know, when he would do a heat treat, he's, he's heat treating six knives at a time and he has to sit with the oven all day. Hmm. That's all day. He could be making other knives. You know, and so now he's realized that it's cheaper for him to have it heat treated by the, by, you know, the top heat treat company in the nation. So, you know, the, the American Blade Works Model 1 version 6 are now going to start coming out at MagnaCut at 63 to 64 HRC. He, uh, he exemplifies, I mean, his whole, the fact that you just said Model 1 version 6 says it all. I mean, that's, that's how he has built that knife. I had, uh, I have the version five uh, liner lock and uh, one of my uh, a viewers sent in three other iterations. I think it was four, one and two. I don't know when it was aluminum and you know, diff different models of them. And they were all um, uh, good and some even really good, but that wasn't good enough for him. And he was taking all of that uh, customer feedback and incorporating it. And he settled, not settled. He he honed it. He honed in on his design on on version six, and to me, that is uh, that's pre customer care. That's like making sure that the thing he delivers, you know, despite the little inconsistencies that might come up in in some of the heat treat and that kind of thing. But that that's that exactly why that's exactly why I bought the knife is because it was version six. Mm. That was Michael Barton admitting, I've changed this five times now to make it better. You know. Who does that? Man. You know, hey, it probably in a business standpoint, he may have even been better off not mentioning it, you know, because that means he's got to admit that that the last one wasn't as good as this one. But yeah. uh, I, I appreciate that. That's <clears> why I the knife. I was actually torn between it and a TRA Madam. Um, you know, in G10 scales, they're about the same price. And uh, the Adam might be a little bit thinner. Uh, it is. Off. Might be a little slicier, but with my hands, um, I try to limit how many thumb stud knives I buy because mm -hmm. I, I can't flick a thumb stud knife at all. I, all I can do is slow roll. And uh, so with the Model One version six being a flipper, that's that's why I went with it. You know, I would have I would love for Marianne to make a flipper knife. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I love her, her company, everything she stands for, everything they do. I just don't like thumb studs. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Shane, tell me, uh, tell viewers a little bit about your channel too, what your goals are with that and, uh, and about your lives. Well, um, my channel, I, I never set out to have a channel. Um, I didn't have a channel at all when I started knives live and, you know, several people said, Hey, you know, people kind of get to know you. it would be a great time to start a channel or whatever. So I set out to start one and, um, and I, I did, and I had, I've had several people very kindly try to, uh, give me tips and corners on how to have a successful channel. Uh, Jared Neve being one of those. And let's face it, if you want advice on how to build a channel, you get it from Jared Neve. Yeah. And I was extremely appreciative, but also had to be honest with Jared. I'm not willing to do that. You know, I, I was, I'm not willing to do what it takes to have a huge channel. I'm perfectly fine having a small channel where I can give my opinion on things. My originally my channel was called Pocket Knife Review. How I was lucky enough to get 
that name not be taken, I don't know. But <laughs> also, it was a double-edged sword because it buried me in the algorithm. You couldn't find my channel. So I changed the name, and now looking back on it, it's even more ironic because I don't think I've ever done a proper pocket knife review. <laughs> um, I really, I get knives in, and I talk about how they make me feel. I know some people think that's silly. Like the Vero Axon makes me feel way smarter than I am when I carry <laughs> it. just does. <laughs> that's you funny. Know, I, I want to wear nicer clothes when I carry the Vero Axon. You know, I, you know, I've got on my golf shirt. I make sure I'm clean shaven. <laughs> Knives, my, knives uh, create emotion for me. So that's what I talk about. You know, uh, don't go to my channel thinking you're going to hear the links and weights and mm -hmm. you're, you're going to hear my opinion on it. You might even hear me rant a little bit about something that's on my mind. Now, my lives, um, I've only done two. And uh, I kind of thought I might have committed channel uh, suicide on my last one, but my first live said Stevie came on with me and that made it so easy, man. Stevie's such a, a great personality and that made it made more comfortable. It made, he kind of kept the ball rolling as to what he, to talk about. Well, last night I tried to do my first one on my own and uh, it went off the rails to say the least. Uh, I, I talked about the things I wanted to talk about and then it turned into a talk about uh, men and our, our, our mental health and, uh, you know, some of uh, my mental health issues and some of the things that I struggle with and uh, not stuff that I would normally want to admit on a platform that anybody in the world can now go back and watch it. Uh, and when it was over, I literally thought it was over. <laughs> you know, I thought people are never going to come back. Oh, man. And uh, all day today, Bob, that's, that's all I've got are, are messages about how awesome it was and how refreshing it was you know, to hear somebody talk about the things that they've been feeling that they're they're too embarrassed to talk about and uh so maybe it's all going to be okay you know i can't uh, guarantee it's... what i'm i can't guarantee what i'm going to talk about this sunday <laughs> i don't know hey shane uh that that's i mean i hinted at it in my uh open but that's one of the things that uh drew me to you one of the things that i remember about our conversation so well is that uh, and I'm not going to repeat what you said, but you were very honest with me. Uh, you were very complimentary, but you were also very honest with me about what you felt the shortcomings were of, of you know, my channel. And and I really valued it because I, you know, it can't, it's not like you just walked up to me and said, here are the shortcomings of your channel. It came out of a really awesome conversation and I appreciated your honesty. And it wasn't, it was in no way an attack. It was a, hey man, I, I, I love your channel. Uh, here's some things, you know? <laughs> And I appreciated that. And I think people probably um, watching your live last night thought that it did the opposite of go off the rails. But man, here's someone who's making themselves vulnerable. And what could be what could make you feel better and stronger than doing something like that? Uh, I want to I want to wrap this up with something I, I do with people of your ilk. I want to do a speed round with okay. you, sir. Um, okay. But before we do, I want to make sure that everyone knows where they can find you. Uh, they can uh, let everyone know where they can find you. It's just Shane Gables PKR on, on YouTube. Same on Instagram. Uh, <clears throat> those are the best two places to find me. And I, I did want to add one thing. I, I don't know if we, uh, I know we were supposed to talk about Knives Live, like I said, but um, more details will be coming out about that. I don't have the exact dates as far as when we're going to open the window for you sending in your 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 receipt to John because because of the uh, the Jason Brown incident um, we're, we've we've kind of had to move some things around because uh, like I said I, I've told people I, I want Doug to hear this but if you only have the money to donate to one don't donate to Jason Brown uh, I don't want to step on that at all so we kind of move some things around so. Details are coming up about how to enter and when to enter. Um, we, we decided not to move the live. It's still be November 4th and 5th. Um, it's not going to be like last year where we had some guys doing two and three hour slots. We had more than enough participants this year, you know, so uh, it should be 24 great hosts and hopefully they have guests um, as many as they want. And, and don't expect it's, it's not like a, a, uh, 
a St. Jude's marathon, as much as I love St. Jude's. Where I don't tell people what to talk about. I don't tell people how to handle their content. I, it's going to be a lot of lighthearted cutting up and talking about knives. You know, and every now and then you might hear a little bit of something about how to donate to knife rights. So, right on. It's just a good time I want to get across. All right, good time with like-minded people. Right. All, for, all for a good cause. Right. All righty, sir. Are you ready? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's only sixteen questions, but oh. uh, by by the end we will have a uh, a a deep look into your soul. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Fixed or folder? Folder. Flipper or thumb stud? Flipper. Washers or bearings? Bearings. Tip up or tip down? I tip down. <laughs> Tonto or Bowie? Tonto. Hollow ground or flat ground? Hollow ground. Full size or small? Full size. Uh, gentleman's knife or tactical knife? Tactical knife. Automatic or bally song? Automatic. Benchmade or Spyderco? Spyderco. Chris Reeve or Hinderer? Chris Reeve. Milled titanium or spring clip? Spring clip. Carbon fiber or micarta? Micarta. <laughs> finger choil or no choil? Always a finger choil. Always a finger choil. Form or function? Function. Okay, and then lastly, your desert island knife. And that just means the one knife you save if you have to get rid of the rest of your collection. My Sabenza. All right, Sabenza. You know, this question, I'm glad no one's ever asked me this one because uh, my mind goes to sentimentality um, yeah. and I think of gift knives. And I have so many gift knives I can never give away. And actually, uh, I just want to double back real quick and just say that's you were describing what you can expect to see from your videos, uh, close-ups of knives, what's on your mind, how they make you feel. And that's why I really like your channel. I mean, I, I I have certain people I go to for the specs and for the performance uh, feedback and all that kind of stuff. And then there are other people that I go to for for different reasons. And I kind of make my videos in a, in a similar vein. And I I really appreciate your um, your tabletop videos because they're way more than just close up looks at knives. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All righty, Mr. Gables, Mr. Shane Gables, thank you so much for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast. It was a pleasure, as always, catching up with you and finding out about Lives Knife, uh, Knives Live. Uh, people, please be sure to check out November 4th and 5th. That's a Friday and Saturday. It's 6 p.m. to 6 p.m., right? That's correct. And it will start the 6 p.m. Central Time on Friday, November 4th. And Tri State EDC will be the kickoff channel. So. Right on. It should, be, it should be a great hot man. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh man. It's going to be an awesome time and I'm, I'm participating this year. I'm very excited. Alrighty, sir. Thanks for coming on and I'll talk to you real soon. Thank you. You guys right. have a good one. You too, sir. Take care. Do you carry multiple knives then overthink which one to use when an actual cutting chore pops up? You're a knife junkie of the first order. Yep, there he goes, Shane Gables, a uh, man who really does exemplify the spirit of the knife world, uh, the knife community that we're always talking about here on the show. Uh, so great to have him on. Um, I'm so glad I met him in person and so glad I had him on this show. Can't wait to help out uh, the, um, the knife rights um, uh, fundraising. And uh, man, it, it, it promises to be a blast. So thank you, Shane, for coming on the show. And thank you, uh, one and all, for watching and listening. Be sure to join us next week for another interview with a great Knife World luminary. And of course, uh, be sure to check out Wednesday for the Midweek Supplemental, Thursday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch for Thursday Night Knives. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. 
For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.